Throughout history, there have been few prisons which are known for suffering brutality and execution, like the Tower of London is. It was a place where three queens of England lost their heads, and where torture devices such as the rack and the scavenger's daughter caused a huge degree of pain. The Tower was not always a place of evil, as it would in the medieval period be a royal residence, but during the reign of King Henry VIII it became a royal prison. But it was the place where executions were carried out, even during the Second World War, as a German spy named Joseph Jacobs would be tied to a chair inside the firing range and was then shot by a firing squad within the walls of the infamous fortress. But torture inside of the tower was deployed many times, and one man even died on the rack such was his suffering, as he was stretched limb from limb. However, there was a secret and mostly unknown torture device which was used inside of the tower, and this was a tiny chamber which would possibly become more feared than the rack. This oubliette, known as Little Ease, has to be one of the most horrific torture methods in history. Join us today as we look at this, and as always, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Inside of the Tower of London, you can really feel the suffering what happened in the centuries before. Torture was very feared, and the tower's reputation got darker with this. The tower was where King James I had given permission for the infamous traitor and plotter Guy Fawkes to be subjected to torture, and the king in his own handwriting stated that the gentler tortures should be applied first before he would then be placed on the rack. But throughout the centuries across Europe, one of the most feared torture and execution methods was the oubliette. This was a very small dungeon or a hole in the ground where a prisoner would be forced or thrown in, and they were then simply forgotten. There would be complete darkness and no light, and the prisoner would suffer greatly. The word oubliette is derived from the French term to forget, which sums the oubliette up perfectly. There was no chance that someone would ever get out of the oubliette alive, and prisoners were mostly given no food to succumb to starvation and madness, but sometimes guards to quicken death would even throw excrement into the dungeon cell and litter to increase their chances of getting a deadly infection and then dying. It was really hell on earth. The oubliette was also so tightly packed that an inmate would be locked into one position for the rest of their lives, as they would often be forced to crouch or hover as there was no chance of standing up. This added a lot of physical pain to the psychological element, but there was an oubliette inside of Warwick Castle which became so notorious for its brutality that in France during the 100 Years' War, the enemy's soldiers found out about it. But the Tower of London's oubliette was made centuries after it's believed, as early recorded accounts of this being used do not exist, but it would be used in the 16th or 17th centuries on the most infamous of prisoners. The location of Little East today is not completely known, and it is a forgotten part of the tower, but there are a number of hypotheses about this. The first is my personal one, and that this is inside the dungeon of the White Tower, the oldest part of the Tower of London. These rooms in particular, underground, feel like a torture chamber when inside of them, and in particular there's a room next to a gift shop, which feels similar to a torture chamber and jail, which is found in Warwick Castle, with its ominous large window. It's also very far underground here, meaning the screams of a prisoner would not be heard. Another possibility is that the oubliette is in another tower, such as the Lower Wakefield Tower, where it's believed torture methods such as the rack were used. But Little Eads was terrifying. It was a windowless, lightless cell, and a prisoner would be in complete darkness all day, and they would not know the time or what was going on. It was a 1.2 metre square space, which had been made almost in the corner of a wall, and it was secured by a hatch or a door. It was either made by a mason or a guard who tried to create this torture cell for his victims. But Little Ease was so small that an adult human could not stand, sit or lie down, and they were forced to crouch in a very uncomfortable position for 24 hours a day, for many days on end. There was, very much so, Little Ease, or no relaxation found in the prison cell, hence where it got its name from. But Little Ease would be used upon the most serious prisoners sent to the tower, who needed breaking, and it was kept as a last resort, and was also used in opposition to the rack, and other brutal torture methods such as the manacles. Throughout the Tudor period, the different lieutenants of the tower, 
those men responsible for torture and imprisonment inside the fortress would try to innovate and come up with different ideas for torture. This is where the scavenger's daughter came from, a torture device aimed to compress. But the first recorded uses of Litalese as a method came from the reign of King Henry VIII, as there was a strange incident involving a beefeater guard whose job it was to keep prisoners and people locked up in the tower. Escaping from the fortress was made very difficult, but John Board, a beefeater, had fallen in love with a female prisoner known as Alice Tankerville, and she had coerced Board into helping her escape one evening, and the pair may have even fallen in love. They managed to escape, with Board seemingly happy to turn his back on a career as a jailer for the king, but the pair were then arrested outside the walls of the Tower of London by the Knight's Watch. But because Board was a beefeater, whose job it was to keep prisoners locked up, he was given a horrific ordeal of suffering at the hands of the other guards, who were furious with him. Alice Tankerville would be executed in a barbaric way, as she was hanged in chains at the low watermark upon the Thames, where she drowned, literally waiting for her execution. But John Board, the guard, became the first known occupant of the tower's oubliette, Little Ease. He was forced in there due to the disgust the other guards had for him, and he knew what would come for him. Board would later be hanged in chains over the tower, following also being racked. But the oubliette at the Tower of London continued to be used, and there are accounts of those who were held in there. For example, it was said, on the 3rd of May 1555, Stephen Haps for lewd behaviour and obstinacy committed this day to the tower to remain in Little Ease for two or three days, till he may be further examined. It's believed Little Ease would have encouraged Stephen Haps not to re-offend. But another account states of the use of the oubliette that, 10th of January 1591, Richard Topcliffe is, is to take part in an examination in the tower of George Beasley, seminary priest, and Robert Humberson, his companion. And if you shall see good cause by their obstinate refusal to declare the truth, of such things as shall be laid to their charge in Her Majesty's behalf, then shall you hereof commit them to the prison called Little Ease, or to such other ordinary place of punishment as hath been accustomed to be used in those cases, and to certify proceedings from time to time. There were other priests who were held in the tower, and one of those was Edmund Campion, a Jesuit to its believed, was also held inside of Little Ease for a period of four days, as Elizabeth I began to persecute Catholic priests across the country. But the man who would become the most famous occupant of Little Ease, and possibly the most notorious tortured individual in the Tower's history, was Guy Fawkes, a gunpowder plotter. He was caught red-handed inside of the basements of the Houses of Parliament, armed with a slow match, and dozens of barrels of gunpowder. He was charged with trying to blow up Parliament, which would have seen King James I, and the majority of his royal family and government, blown to kingdom come. Catholics like Fawkes were fed up of the persecution they experienced, and when discovered, James I even signed the torture warrant in his own hand, giving instructions for Fawkes to be tortured inside the Tower of London. Guy Fawkes to begin with gave little information up, and then harsher methods were used such as the rack, and then the plotter then began to talk. It was the rack that broke him, and he was also placed inside of Little Ease after his racking. His joints may have been dislocated and tendons snapped, and forcing him into this crouched position in Little Ease for some time would have been enough to get him to hand over information. He would inside the Tower of London name the co-conspirators behind the gunpowder plot to kill the king, and he signed his confession in his own hand. Following the torture of Guy Fawkes, Little Ease was said to have been disused and decrepit. The use of the room would be brutal, but it's most certain that there were more victims than are recorded and known about of Little Ease. It was used in the most serious of cases, when a prisoner needed to be broken. It was an oubliette, which was most probably being underground, and there was just a small opening to allow someone to be let in and let out. But Little Ease today is believed to have been lost to time. There is some debate as to whether it was bricked up by a mason, but its true location must be known by those beef eaters who work at the Tower of London. But we know that inside of the basement of the White Tower, there was a lot of torture that occurred there, and the oubliette as a torture method would be very brutal. It was pure psychological torture caused by a dungeon where there was no means of escape or movement for many people, and following a short stint in Little Ease, 
many of the victims of this prison cell would then be sent to their executions at sites such as Tower Hill or Tyburn. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.